my esteemed Lord Cricken, I stand ready to embark on this odyssey into the domain of the local peasantry, with unwavering resolve and a keen eye for overseeing their activities. I shall dutifully report back to you on their deeds and comportment. Tis troubling to hear of such discontent among the peasantry, Already? whispering tales of memory theft, ominous vows of lobotomies, and calls for drastic actions upon this advisor. As their noble spokesperson, I shall keep a keen eye on these unrestful murmurs and report faithfully back to you, my Lord Cricken. Is the entire thing... Well, I don't know why he all kept advisor. He takes his job very seriously. What happens if we all ask him on a date? Then he will start responding to that. In sooth, the peasants doth find <laughs> themselves enamored with my countenance and seeketh my company at table. Tis See? but fitting that they should admire one of such noble birth and bearing. Let their jests and fervor be a testament to the allure of my aristocratic deportment. You Tis guys... an affront to my station, a daring soul who speaks such impudence. What do you say? Gall to jest at a nobleman's expense with words unfit for Who? courtly discourse. Who said Such this? Such insolence shall not be tolerated in the presence of Lord Thistlewood. Who, who said, uh, Lord Thistlewood? Who, who spoke out at you in this way? I don't know who he's referring to. He was pissed. My Lord Cricken, the impudent rascal, hath dared to name himself Garlic Salt. <gasps> casting jests and wayward compliments upon my Girl person. Exalt! Such audacity in the village square, challenging my Seize dignity him! and station with frivolous words of admiration and insolence. <laughs> As you command, my lord, the peasants offer a tapestry of ideas, rats, turnips, or bear men for your banner. Dragons <laughs> and hamsters, eagles and squirrels dance in their musings. A cactus, perhaps, to signify thy unwavering strength. The choice huh. is yours to make, my lord. Uh, is there a cactus? Lord Thistlewood, please inform the peasantry that we have picked the, the noble snail as our coat of arms. As thou hast decreed, my lord, the noble snail shall grace our banner, a symbol of steadfastness and poise. I shall relay this tidings to the peasantry with utmost respect and dignity. My lord, for growth and dominion resonates uh, through their chaotic banter. They strive for advancement and no. power. Yet, yes, sir, and yes, sir. I'm trying to turn him down. Oh. Oh, my lord, hello? the oh. peasants cry for rebellion and growth. My lord, okay. the nope. villagers' voices carry a chorus of fear and chaos. Their cries of demon and evil echo <laughs> through the murky air. The shadows of suspicion and dread loom large in their hearts as they beseech He's like, for deliverance guys, from this For some reason, force. the peasants are afraid Shall of me. We shed light upon this dark enigma, my lord. <laughs> a subscriber hath joined oh. the realm. Oh. Mew Void's loyalty spans a good over news. many moons and their presence adds to the grandeur of our court. Let us extend our gratitude for their generous subscription, a token of their allegiance to your noble cause, my lord. We need a logging camp, ah, probably. The oh. wretched tales of the peasantry never cease to disgust and amuse me, my lord oh, Kraken. Such pitiful creatures, drowning in their own misery and filth, forever oh begging for succor from their betters. <laughs> Tis a wonder they can even stand beneath the weight of their own incompetence and disease. Um, where is the good? actions of Mr. Poop in Soup, gifting <laughs> subs to names most dishonorable, like Mrs. Sprinkle Tits, are a mere reflection of the squalor and ignorance that binds the peasantry. That's Let so true. Alas, the brave soul who dares to speak in admiration of our noble <laughs> estate goes by the moniker Fuzzy Cat Games. <laughs> May their loyalty and praises find favor in our court, Lord Cricket. Everyone, applaud Fuzzy Cat Games. Amidst Thank you, Fuzzy Cat Games. In the, the base and simple-minded peasantry in the village jest and mock with their crude markings of Omega Lul and Lul, showcasing the shallowness of their wit. Their mindless <laughs> clamor of get that guy and grab them reverberate through the village. As hollow laughter fills the air, the peasants request to deport Grimy Basil to France, 
revealing their discontent. See of spatulacity, jests at another as worm tongue, deriding their honor. They another for your intervention to punish the insolent peasantry. He, he, treacherous tendencies. he specifically oh, didn't name himself as Worm Tongue. Of these common rabble. That is amazing. He literally read that you guys called him Worm Tongue. It is a dire situation unfolding in the village, oh, my no. Lord Kriken. What is the it? The hungry cries of the peasants grow louder as winter approaches. They it, beg for sustenance. It's April. And fear of starvation is palpable. <laughs> Tell them it is your birthday soon, and they should be nice to you, because I believe they have been quite mean until now. Understood, my lord. I shall convey to the villagers that your birthday approaches, no. and they would be wise to show kind. My dear lord Cricken, <laughs> I am in the pink of health, though my spirits are dampened by the incessant ramblings of the peasantry. He still what hates you, you guys. From the realm? Free me from France. <laughs> I have bad news, Grammy Basil. Because we wiped his memory, he forgot he sent you to France. So, as far as he's aware, he, do <laughs> he doesn't know who you are. Dude, I love chat trying to get Lord, Thistlebol <laughs> Lord Thistlewood's attention about Grimy Basil being trapped in France. My Lord Kriken, the peasants' opinions on your road work are as varied as the colors in a summer meadow. The villagers' discourse takes a tumultuous turn as they entertain notions of tomatoes, stonks, and jesters sent to distant lands. As now, what command, pray tell is Lord a Kriken, stonk? I, my esteemed Lord Kriken, tis with a humble heart that I must admit my ignorance in this matter of stonks. <laughs> Shall I seek further elucidation from the villagers? The villagers' chatter dances between japes of stonks and jesters pondering the worth of crypto investments and musing on drowning wives. They seek oh. to gaze them. The villagers share their joys with exclamations like yippee and clap, intertwining jest with loyalty in their expressions. They playfully banter with terms like Omega Liu L and L M A O, adding a <laughs> colorful flair. In recent times, the peasant by the name of Grekmo has raised his voice in praise of your noble self within the village square. Grekmo. His calls for applause mingle with tales, both comical and grim, adding to the colorful tapestry of our realm's happenings. Hark, tell me a example of one of Grekmo's grim tales. As requested, the tale of Greg Mo weaves a tapestry Greg of disarray Mo. and intrigue within the realm. The common folk speak of fires raging uncontrolled. Lord Thistlewood, seize this, Greg Mo. We cannot have such disturbances. I want them in stocks by the morrow. Alas, in the village square, a swirl of turmoil and tumult pervades as the peasants cry out for songs and justice. The shadow of Greg Mo looms large, casting doubt and fear among the populace. Whispers of witchcraft and accusations unfurl like tendrils of mistrust. The murmurs of a potential uprising suggest the fragility of order, with uncertainty shrouding the fate of Greg Mo as the peasantry's sentiments waver betwixt chaos and reverence. The peasants question the very essence of justice as if it were a sentiment rather than a noble pursuit. Talks of revolt and support for Greg oh. Mo resonate oh. in the digital realm alongside unexpected alliances and fervent calls for rebellion against your rule. This is insane that Greg Mo has been made a martyr when it is a misspelling of someone in chat, Greg Mo, who literally only said clap once. I clap in his name for Greg Mo. <laughs> he was so humble. Greg Mo is a false prophet. My Lord Kriken, doesn't exist, by the, the way. Villagers' fervor for Greg Mo as a divine figure grows. Oh no! Shrouded. Lord Thistlewood, what do you suggest we do with Greg Mo? My Lord Cricken, the situation with Greg Mo grows more intricate by the moment. They speak of building a church in his honor, extolling his virtues and leadership. Amidst the fervent praise, whispers of doubt linger, raising questions about Greg Mo's true nature and intentions. Lord Thistlewood, you should warn the peasants that there is a storm afoot. They should all hide inside their hovels or ditches. In the village, 
the whispers of Greg Moe's deeds spread like wildfire. From rain blessings to providing shelter, they call for more femboy and brace for impending danger. Looking to Greg Mafro as their guiding light, my Lord Kryken, the new ally Gregmo, claimed in his subscription message, it is I, Greg Mo. You shall all have freedom in surplus. Oh my god, we I sympathize Wait. with the peasants' plight. They're clever really? for femboys and shelter amidst <laughs> the storm, stirring unrest in the village. The shadow of Greg Mo's influence looms large. My it's Lord June. Kricken, the village is a buzz with fervent pleas for rat-free carts, shelter, <laughs> and entertainment amidst the clamor of a femboy revolution. Oh the peasants' God. tumultuous desire. How is he, how is he zeroing in on this? Ah, oh, just... the whims of the villagers. In their jests and clamor for unusual delights like meatball subs, femboy revolutions, and brothels, they paint a peculiar <laughs> image indeed. And the curious conflict between rats and femboys, whispers of a counter-revolution, and the rise of cat boys to combat the rats, oh. add a twist <laughs> to the tale. Hear ye, hear ye, by decree of Lord Cricken, he doth proclaim that potatoes shall be yours to enjoy upon completion of the firewood harvest from yonder forest. Farm well, dear peasants, lest thou freeze in the cold embrace of winter's grasp. I like Alas, the, uh... the peasants in the village doth ah. yearn for potatoes and spices, grieving the vanishing of Greg Mo. Master Lord Kryken, <laughs> the peasants clamor for femtatoes and femboys. Oh, Strange tales of spells for loggers' abundance doth swirl among them. The local ditch Lord Thistlewood, I want no more mention of femboys by you. I've had enough of your of femboys. Your quirks. Understood, my lord. No more shall the mention of femboys pass these lips at your command. Are the cat boys out too? Dude, he's not even saying anything now because he's like. I can't talk about my favorite thing. They clamor for revolution and the downfall of the rich. Yet their longings for Shrek 2 on DVD, <laughs> Femboy's Liberation, Seasoned Fries, and Waifu Potatoes paint a whimsical tapestry of desires. Lord Thistleward, if thine art no uh, loyal as thy declared, then henceforth thine shalt no longer be referring to Femboy's. I'm growing quite sick of it. Thank you. The peasantry doth clamor for Shrek 2. We have Death Comes Second wants to add a new BTTV emote for a million channel points. Capping? What am I looking at? Is it a dog? Villagers, lend me thine ears. Amidst the cacophony of capping and bewilderment, a dog hath been sighted. Oh! Some adore its presence, others seek explanation. Yes. Hearken, villagers. Thy talk of capping and the sussy dog stirs much intrigue. Hark, villagers. Lord Kraken acknowledgeth thy new companion, the dog named Capping. I acknowledge. Embrace this creature with care and camaraderie. Thy chatter of a megalol, lore, and the question, what the dog doing reaches us. <laughs> villagers, attend. Thy fervent cries for a femboy tavern reach Lord Kraken's ears. Herpaderp removed another emote? Uh-oh, what's it gonna be? Just, he killed Glorf! If he vanquished the bandit menace. Oh, one that was a, that was a, I did not see that coming. Villagers, let your resolve guide you. Stand firm against the furry bandits to protect our beloved tavern. They're Notice, furries now? Unity is thy strength. The thy villagers are upset because they lost a the hero today. Has reached in Glorf, Glorf the cat. Unite thy let them fighters. mourn. Villagers. Hear this somber news. Today, we mourn the loss of a hero, Glorp the cat. <laughs> Allow thy hearts to grieve and honor Glorp's memory. Let unity and solace guide us through this time of sorrow. To soothe thy sorrow, feasts shall be considered. Stand firm against <laughs> bandits. They're furry considered. <laughs> or false. Together, furry we shall honor Glorp's memory and find strength in unity and resilience. Villages. It'll be considered. Gather close. A fond memory of Glorp the cat comes to mind. Oh. Once, amidst tumult and strife, Glorp chased a gleaming sunbeam through the halls, bringing oh. smiles and laughter to all who saw. Cherish this that. joyous recollection as we honor Glorp's spirit. Villagers, 
gather close in the newly built tavern. Here now, a poem in honour of our beloved Glorp. Amidst the sunlit halls he'd chase, a gleaming beam, a radiant grace. With playful paws and feline glee, our hearts he filled, wild and free. In shadows cast by fleeting light, he danced away the darkest night. Now gone from sight, yet close at heart, in memory we'll never part. Rejoice and raise a cup to cheer for Glorp, whose spirit lingers near. His joyful for chase oh, through still going, sorry. glow, forever cherished, we honor so. Let this homage bring unity and solace to us all.